All right, everybody, welcome to our last video for September. In this video, I want to go over um, some scripture that has to do with um, this particular part of Catholic social teaching with family, community, and participation, where this teaching really draws um, its meaning from in the Bible as well as different um, crafts and activities that can be done to go along with this. So in Genesis, like I uh, said in the last video, Genesis 2.18, um, God said about Adam, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. We're meant to um, be with other people. And in Genesis 4, 8 through 15, um, during this conversation, it is said, I am my brother's and sister's keeper. Um, so one has to really um, look around and make sure that the people that are around you, your family, your friends, um, that they're doing well, that you're kind of keeping tabs on them, saying like, you know, do they need anything? Are they okay? In Leviticus, we learn um, what you own belongs to the Lord and is given for the good of all. So Leviticus 25 verses 23 through 43. Um, within that segment there, um, we learn that what we physically have, whether it's money, toys, clothes, things like that, um, really those things are all blessings from God and they come from God. And we didn't necessarily like earn those things, especially since, you know, if you're still a kid, still in school, you don't have a job, you know, you're not necessarily buying those things. Um, it's a gift from God through your parents. Um, so what you own is given for the good of all. So usually when um, gifts or things that are purchased are passed between people, um, it helps um, for the relationship. It's a way to recognize um, some something good that that person did or a reason that they're being celebrated, like a birthday present or a gift for um, like getting straight A's or something like that. Um, but we also have a responsibility to give of what we have to help other people. So if we have extra food or extra clothes, we have a responsibility to share those with people who might not have those things. In Jeremiah chapter seven, um, they say, if you act justly with one another, God will dwell in the land. That basically just means like we have to be fair. We have to be fair, we have to be equal, we have to be generous. We have to make sure that um, we're not lying to people, we're not keeping um, things that people need away from them. And if we act in a fair way, um, God will be happy with that, he'll be proud of us, and he'll be with us. The prophet Micah said, act justly, love kindness, and walk, walk humbly with God. It's the same thing, be fair, be kind, um, be humble, don't brag, um, share with other people. John chapter 15 says, this is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Jesus said this to his followers, um, reminding them that they need to demonstrate a love for one another by their actions. In Romans, um, the Apostle Paul says, we are one body, individually members of one another, so we are all in this together. In Hebrews, um, rouse one another to love and good works. So basically, um, we need to work together um, to show emotional love to each other, but also to do good things for one another, to be helpful to one another. Um, James said, our faith is dead if we ignore others in need. That's pretty dramatic. Like if you say that you have faith in God, and if you say that you're a Christian, that you're a Catholic, um, that you believe and have faith and believe in Jesus, if you're saying all of those things, um, and you truly, truly believe in God and in Jesus, you should want to be like them. You should want to make them proud. And that involves um, acting the way they did and treating others the way they did and treating people the way that we would want to be treated. So that means, you know, clothing people who don't have clothing and donating food and donating water and um, spending time with people who are sick or relatives who are older. Um, just kind of seeing to other people's needs, going and um, spending time with a friend when they're feeling kind of disappointed or down instead of doing something else that you wanted to do. Peter's first letter in chapter 4 says, Serve one another with the gifts you have received. Everybody is different. Everybody is special. Everybody has something or 
a few somethings that make them um, different than other people, things that they're really, really good at. And we should be using those things to help other people. Whether that's that we have, um, we're really smart and we can help like tutor our classmates. Maybe you're somebody who is um, really strong and really athletic. Um, maybe you could play with or coach some of the younger kids in your community. Um, so whatever your special talent is, um, to try to find a way to use that to help the people around you. 1 John chapter 3 says we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Again, this is very like dramatic. He's basically saying like, you know, if somebody is um, in danger, like you, you would sacrifice yourself for them. But, you know, you think about how much love like your parents have for you, you know, if that they would do anything to keep you safe and to keep you happy and to keep you well. And then finally in 1 John chapter 4, they say those who love God must love their brothers and sisters. So since God made all of us, since we are all God's children, um, if we say that we love God, then that means that we have to love other people also. Because otherwise we're just saying, oh, well, I'll love God, but I'm not going to love anybody else that's in your family, just you. Um, and that's not fair because God loves those people. And... If you're saying, well, God, I love you, I just don't love any of the people that you love. And um, again, like that's not really um, the way that it works. So if we love God, if we have faith, um, then we have to love our brothers and sisters. So we have a couple different activities. Um, if you're in grades K through two, you got um, one of these sheets. Basically on the outer circle, you can write, um, a person or thing that is in your city or town, your community, um, someone in your classroom, someone in your family, and then yourself, your own name. And try to think of at least one thing, and you can write it or draw it, try to think of at least one thing you could do to be um, helpful, to participate in your city or town, your class, your family, and then also to help yourself. If you are in grades three through eight, you have received a packet that has this matching sheet. Um, you have to um, match up the problems from Louise Ma's story with the solutions that were given in Louise Ma's story. And I will post um, the answer key at the end of the video. Then once you get back together with your families, there were two projects that were done um, and you can um, do these at home. So the first project is this family and community bingo board. So everybody in their packet has one of these. So, and this is for all ages. This is for the whole family to get together and work on. So on this bingo board, I want you to fill up every single square with something that you can do to participate in your family or your community. Um, so I filled out mine. Um, I have, um, have a family movie night pick up trash in my neighborhood, have my whole family go to mass together, um, go on a hike, go to the community splash pad, um, go for a drive together, um, buy something to support a small local business, um, go and have dinner at a locally owned restaurant, so not a chain restaurant, but someone that's somewhere that's owned by someone who lives in your community. Um, watching a Buffalo Bills game and going to an event at my son's school, whether it's parent-teacher um, conference night or open house, something like that, visiting a public library. So those are just some ideas, but I would like you to sit down with your families and really think about things that you would like to do um, to help out and be involved in your family and your community. And then the last thing is a family tree. So this is not a typical family tree. You'll notice there's lots of names on here, but there's not necessarily a specific order to this family tree. Um, you'll see here I have family, oops, I'll look on the side, in uh, quotation marks. So this is not just my family as in like, these are my parents and then there's me and my husband and our kids 
and my husband's sister and her kids, even though they are on here. But they're not on here in any particular order. There's also um, my godchildren are on here, my best friends and their kids are on here. My favorite Tim Hortons employee is on here. Um, some of my parents' best friends are on here. So this is going to be um, a family tree that you can just make with like crayons or markers. You can use any like type of construction paper. It doesn't have to be this big um, at home. And try to make a family tree that's not about like your descendants. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like my grandparents, my parents, me. Um, but more the people, their names, um, of the people that you consider to be your family. So not just, like I said, your parents and grandparents, but your aunts and cousins, your friends, your neighbors, um, your, um, like I have on there, my favorite Tim Hortons employee that I see like almost every single day, um, that's super nice and friendly and just really like makes me smile every morning because they're super, um, fun and upbeat. So try to make a family tree with all of the people that are really special and just kind of spend some time talking as a family about um, what your family and your community specifically look like and what they mean to you and what you can do to be involved with them and help them.